things all charred vixen and it is time for what does the vixen say i just wanted to give a shout out to um samus slayer i met him about two years ago uh he's a young teenager who streams you all should go check him out um kind of interesting to watch people grow through their channels as they grow in physical form and life and stuff so He's got some pretty cool little videos he's got going on. So you shall go check him out. Tell him. Charlie Dixon said hi. Um, but today's question is, and this is just one that came to me from someplace else where we were doing a discussion of um, writing stories. Why does it seem like there's no divine intervention of any type in horror films? Or horror books, too. I mean, I've read a lot of horror books. I've read books by... And I'm really itchy today, so... Um, I've read books by John Saul. Really great writer, if you get a chance to check him out. I'll probably talk about him on one of my um, vlogs, Know Thyself, because he was a big part of uh, <clears throat> my teenage years. I uh, don't read him much now, but I read him a lot. Probably for about 20 years, and then, I don't know, you just move on sometimes. Sometimes stories don't have the same appeal as they used to. But anyway, as a writer, because I write too, um, and I don't write a lot of horror. Horror? Horror. I can't talk. I don't write a lot of horror, okay? I don't watch a lot of horror. I don't like to be scared. That is not something I enjoy. A lot of people like to get scared. They like that feeling of the adrenaline kicking in and they and they're heavy. I don't because I had a lot of adrenaline. I had a lot that did that <clears throat> when I was a, when I was growing up. So <clears throat> I don't like to be scared since I'm highly sensitive to really weird shit. So I don't like that feeling of uh, feeling like you have no control. <laughs> That's why I don't skydive or hand glide or deep uh, do scuba diving or anything, which is why I want, like I said, to be reincarnated as a bad motherfucker the next time around. Mad motor scooter and a bad go-getter. <clears throat> or is it a bad motor scooter and a mad go-getter? I don't know. It's from a song. But I always want, it, I always want to have more of that inside me because I get too scared and freaked out. Um, so, but in, there are some horror shows things are like and I, and and I'm also thinking about but there's a difference between horror and thriller. I mean thrillers there's usually a good end and there are some type of intervention. Horrors I'm thinking of like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um it's usually the antagonist the, not the antagonist but the one sole person survives at the end sometimes. I mean I've seen ones where no one survives. I'm not talking about zombie flicks. Or monster flicks either per se. But I am talking about things like... Um, I think Resident Evil... Not Resident Evil, but... Um, uh, Silent... Silent Hill is like one I'm thinking of. Okay. Um, where she's struggling through the whole time to get... To find the one thing that she's trying to find. Or you're trying to get away from the one thing. Or, you know... Um, and then some of them, of course, don't make any sense at all, like, um, per se, to me. I, and I can't, I can't really talk about them because I don't watch them. My kids, well, my daughter is very into that whole Final Destination thing, um, which I've never seen the show, so if you guys have seen it, you can tell me about it. I probably won't watch it. Um, as a kid, I didn't watch horror. I think the only, I I read it, like Emmyville Horror, I read as a book, um, Ghost Story, which scared me so bad, and <laughs> didn't read it, I started reading it when I was like, I don't know, 15, then went to see the movie, and freaked me out so bad, I didn't reread it, or see the movie again, until much later in life, um, I just, I scare very easily, I scare to the point where the anxiety kicks in, and then I can't sleep, and I freak out, because I start having dreams, and I start seeing things, and my imagination goes, why off the chart, um, not so bad, no, but anyway, um, let's think about this, hang on, cat was in the wrong place, 
Um, I get so scared sometimes. Not so much now. I have a pretty good place where I am. But I get so scared sometimes. Mirrors scare me. Okay, one of the one of the my favorite movies though. It scares me, and I have a hard time watching it. I own it. Still, it has a hard time watching it. Is um, the Prince of Darkness by John Carpenter? Probably a lot of you'd watch it now and go, "This isn't. This is nothing." But it's not so much in that. It's not so much the horror of it, but the supernatural sense that freaks me out. And then I'm like, well, where's God in the supernatural sense? Um, from, my, from my own personal viewpoint of horror stories, uh, they take out the divine intervention because that would be the savior of the day. It's more like mankind is supposed to save itself. Um, but yet, it kinda, it's kind of an interesting thing because it denotes there's divine intervention of just evil divine intervention in these things. Um, one of the first movies I went to see that was a horror movie was I went to the drive-in with a bunch of friends to see, um, Halloween. I had a friend, she's still my friend, so I don't, I have a friend, <laughs> um, we've been friends since, um, junior high, well, or high, yeah, junior high, um, and... She loves horror movies. They were her favorite to go to. So we would go to the drive-in. Yes, I'm so old at drive-ins. Because um, it was $3 a car load. So you get a whole bunch of people in a car. Yes, some of us would get in the trunk. That has been done. I didn't personally get in the trunk. I always felt I was better than that. I could sit in the front. And then the idea of driving back in a trunk after you... Watching a movie just, a scary movie just didn't seem like something I wanted to do. Um, but I, we went and seen Halloween. I don't know what the other movie was because I was so freaked out at Halloween. <laughs> it freaked me out. I'm sure it was another scary movie because usually they did a double feature of the two movies. So, um, but, so we're watching Halloween and there's this point that he jumps on something. I don't remember. I just remember that one of the guys that we were with her jumped out of the car onto <laughs> was at the drive-in see so at about the same time and freaked me out I just threw popcorn and shit everywhere and everybody laughed at me and it was all great fun but I didn't ever go to the drive-in to see a horror movie again um I think <laughs> the next one I saw was up and smoked um and then we saw which one is it the first Friday the 13th, I think. Which one has the camper? You know what I am? I'm not going to be able to remember these and talk about them. But you have the, I think it's Friday the 13th. I'm not positive. It's the one with the campground and, and nobody, sur the one chick survives at the end <laughs> in a boat. Now these movies are so old that if you have not seen them, <clears throat> spoilers. <laughs> If you're young, I guess you maybe haven't seen them, but you've seen the, the some, most of them are franchised now. So you, <clears throat> sorry, I have something going on with my throat today. I think it's, it's, I think it's the fibromyalgia, but I have a feeling allergies, but the fibromyalgia does that, so. <clears throat> Hairball. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so that's the one where they go to the camp. And then in one night, they're chased by the ghost or the creature or the thing that's there. And then, but to me, you know, like these, these, the antagonist in the, in, and that's the right word for this, the antagonist have supernatural divine power. Uh, like Amityville Horror. Now, I read the book Amityville Horror, which scared me. I read it at daylight and freaked me out. Um, and then I had nightmares for like, I don't know, two or three days. I was... 12 years old, 13 years old, I had gotten grounded, and sometimes when I was grounded, I was allowed to read books, sometimes, sometimes they took the books out, and I had to do extra schoolwork, or count the holes on my wall, to think about the things I had done to get grounded, um, but I remember very clearly that, the part about the piggy face, freaked me out, and I was like, I don't want to read this no more, but I read it, I finished it, and it didn't have really an ending, and of course, again, 
Uh, another one is Exorcism. Exorcist. Saw the first one. Linda Bear was all the rage. She was in a much better movie than that one. Um, and again, even though they had priests, no real divine intervention. Like, it was almost like the writers of these stories want you to think that the evilness is stronger than the goodness, which is really not kind of how divineness works. I mean, in reality, it seems like sometimes that um, evil is stronger than good. But I think it's because you have to remember that evil fights in ways that good would not fight. I mean, unless you were, you know, a demon wheeling, or what is it, a, a sword wheeling demon hunter angel, right? Then you would be doing it differently than maybe your God would be wanting you to do it. I don't know. Now, if you're an atheist, this question would never come up because you would be like, yeah, but an atheist technically doesn't believe in anything. So that includes also, and you can you can let me know if that's wrong, but the divine, the, the meaning in psychology is that an atheist literally believes that there, there is no uh, divine intervention, good or bad, in the universe. That it everything is scientifically explained. And there are coincidences and randomization occurs. And you can have patterns, but not necessarily depending on what part you believe. Some people do, some people don't. And then, you know, uh, I can't think of the next word. So we'll give it away. But the next one would be <laughs> a person who believes there's something, but doesn't define it as a god, but is definitely divine. And then you have, then from there you have God beliefs, both good and evil. I mean, there are people who believe in evil being the reigning force of, of everything. So if you believe that evil was the reigning force, the divine force, then the horror movies make absolutely perfect sense. Granted, okay, you're trying to take, I'm trying to be logical about something that isn't logical. It doesn't have logic in it. Um, it has suspicions and superstitions and beliefs of supernatural that um, are like believing in other fantastical things for most people. I believe in fantastical things. I've seen things that kind of incorporate that being a true thing, but I'm also mentally ill and I know there's, there's a percentage of those things that I have seen could have been generated by my brain. I accept that. Um, but they didn't feel that way, so I'm willing to also accept the other side. I'm always on the middle of the road kind of person, except for certain things. So the question then goes back, why, why is there no divine intervention? Well, because the story would probably be very short. <laughs> I mean, if angels walk the earth, right, and maybe not at your beck and call, but they walk the earth, as many people believe, they walk the earth looking for horribly rotten things going on, then they can smite or and destroy and get rid of those things that shouldn't be here. But why sometimes, the argument could be, why sometimes even in real life does it feel like that's not the case? I just think that what you, humans like a very black and white, very easy answer to things. And so sometimes the answers that they would get are not the answers they were seeking, which is usually most of the time. So evil that occurs naturally in the world may not be unplanned from both sides, is all I'm saying, if that's how you look at it. If you're atheist, you wouldn't look at it that way. Um, but for me... I think that everything, and this makes me very unpopular with quite a few people, that everything has a reason. Sometimes, though, the reason is too, I, I want to say global, but like too large for a single mind to reason out the one string that has a connection to them or anyone or someone they care. So I guess the reason for me as a writer that you don't have divine intervention in horror, which is why I don't write horror, is because 
that would be too easy. That would be the end of the world. I like stories where there is a divine intervention in it, good or bad. I mean, not like not like evil or good, but good or bad. Like a good, a good inter divine intervention, but doesn't have a good result to it. Like everybody gets blown away or smited or taken care of. <laughs> That's the end of it. We're done. Um, but like I said, I've only watched bits and pieces of horror horror shows I've only I've read quite a few horror stories and in most of the ones I've read it's about a vengeful ghost of some type who comes back and destroys the world and the people within it and not always is there an, a good ending to that you know like because the ghost is internal whereas people are not um so I just think that the answer to my question which you can comment your answer to the question, um, is that because it would make the story not interesting if you had divine intervention. Now, there are stories I've read, horror stories, where there's divine intervention, and it just takes a while for the divine intervention to occur because some of the stuff that's going on is like a test. Or um, I was thinking to my daughter the other day because we were having a conversation about religion, um, and as you know, I'm a pagan. She's probably believes there's something, but doesn't have a divine idea of what it is. My son is kind of thinking about what he's going along. And then my grandson is exploring the idea of divineness. Um, and that might upset quite a few of you, and you have fear of my internal soul. Uh, you must have faith in what I believe in, as I have faith in what you believe in. And we all are going to get where we all need to go. <laughs> and at the end of it, if I end up someplace that you were right, then you will be able to know you were right. And you will be safe. And that's all that really matters. But, um, so we were talking about religion. And in the concept of that was that I was walking in the rain. And you know how in the rain the worms come up? Like, they come up and they, because the wa too much water and they float up and they're literally drowning. So they're trying to get to a safe place, but you'll see them all over the place. Rain and worms and birds are an excellent thing because the birds get to eat without too much effort. Though I never see them eating a whole lot of waterlogged and dried worms. So they must like them in their natural state. But I don't watch a lot of birds, so maybe not. It's just the weirdness of my brain. Um, But I was walking past, and as a child, it always saddened me to see these worms, you know, like, literally drowning so I would pick them up and move them to an area that was less wet so that they had a better chance of survival um that is kind of how I perceive the gods for me is that we are basically worms to them and they can look down at us and even if they say they love us which some do some don't um Sometimes, how they look at us, I think, is, is why we don't see divine intervention all the time. I mean, I think it's there if you look for it, but it's not, like, in the ways that make sense to our brain. So, but anyway, and I tend to humanize my gods, so this may not work for you. <laughs> this may not even be in the ballpark of what you look at, so don't worry about it. But, um... These are all my own opinions. So, if you, if sometimes they might look at us that they, we need help and the help it comes. And sometimes they might be busy and don't have time to help us. And sometimes our suffering is what is needed for the end result of a much bigger plan or even a smaller plan. Because sometimes when you're in a problem and you have to figure out how to get out of the problem... Um, you may, the ideas that pop in your head may be a divine intervention, and they may not, you know. Um, it depends on how reliant you are on your gods. But I just think that that's the same way that we look at, at smaller things from us, things that we don't feel like might have a connection. You might walk by. I mean, it's like stepping over ants that are traveling on the road. Do you step over them? Do you step on them? Do you not even notice them? Do you not care? I mean, how do you perceive that's how I kind of see the divine intervention of the world. Um, 
But I do believe that if ghosts and demons and other creatures with intent, even gods, had an intent of extreme evilness that if that there might be a divine intervention. Unless, of course, it is the god that is doing the the uh, the gods that are doing it with an intent to just remind people, hey, hey we're here. Um, I have I have witnessed hauntings in person, and there I'm sure is a scientific explanation for those things. But um, they were freaky, and that was enough for me. And so I don't watch them in real life. Um, but like I said, that could just be my mental health. Anyway, that's it. That's the end of that question. You can comment down below. Nothing you say will upset me. I won't, you know, you can say I'm a complete idiot about it. Or that it's not really something to contemplate, which is true. But it was an idea, that a question that kind of came up and I thought it was kind of cool to talk about. All right. So the next vlog will be about a topic. <laughs> I'm not sure what topic yet. So I can't tell you, but it's a topic one. And I will, and you know, and if there's topics that you guys want me to um, visit or look at or talk about, um, go ahead and comment them or go to my Discord and, you know, join. It's in the About page. You know, it's also in my description. Be sure to check out the Gepnik Gang uh, if you're a gamer. But if you're not a gamer but you want to chit-chat, come to my Discord. Go to my Twitter. You know, I have a Facebook. Come and chat and tell me your ideas, the things you'd like to see me talk about and my topics. Okay, so I'm out of here.